Welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast, the photo imaging industry's leading news source. Here's your host, Gary Peugeot. The Dead Pixel Society podcast is brought to you by Media Clip, Advertech Printing, and Independent Photo Imagers. Hello again and welcome to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. I'm your host, Gary Peugeot, and today we're talking to Bill Testa, the founder of Prince, try to say that 10 times fast. And Bill's coming to us from Rochester, New York. Hey, Bill, how are you today? Hi, Gary. How are you doing? Good, good. So you are in the heartland of imaging, at least yeah. imaging history there. Uh, what is your history uh, before you got into Prince? You had actually had a long career in direct mail and other things. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So in the mid 80s, when I got out of college, um, I came to Rochester from SUNY Oswego. Mm -hmm. I studied printing uh, and graphic design, obviously, 1984, when the first Mac computer came out. (laughs) Uh, I learned all on the Mac and then I graduate and and I decided to open up a print shop. Mm -hmm. So I started in the printing industry in 1987. And, you know, offset did, you know, there was no digital at the time till. Right. And CLC 100 came, but I did things differently. I was printing four color process on a, on a one color press back in 1987. And uh, from there, we <laughs> continued to grow the mm-hmm. printing industry. And, and that's what I did for close to 30 years. And mm-hmm. then about, you know, seven, eight years ago, uh, I was getting bored with the mm-hmm. printing industry. And mm-hmm. I, I coach at a high level. And, and I said, you know, let's you know, let's see what we can do in this next phase of life. Mm-hmm. And um, I was able to partner up with uh, one of the top patent uh, gentlemen from us, from uh, Kodak, Eastman Kodak, mm-hmm. uh, Paj Pajol. Mm-hmm. And we put together this platform that we're going to talk about today uh, from the, in the photo world, what the future was and mm-hmm. how we can incorporate the future where that's going mm-hmm. and in the printing industry and encompass you know, close to five, six, seven different verticals all into one. Okay. And that's what we did. So this has been coming for a while. I mean, I mean, like you said, seven or eight years. What what took so long, I guess, is from a technology platform. Was the technology there, not there, or what was the what was the holdup? So the first no, the first thing was to secure the patents. So that was the first year and a half, you know, getting all that done. Mm-hmm. And then once once that was all done, before we even started even thinking about how to build it out. I wanted to do customer discovery. So I did another 18 months, you know, going around to companies. If I build this, mm-hmm. what do you think? And they're like, well, I don't think you can, right? Every, everybody's, I don't think you can do this. And I'm like, well, okay, but if I can. Mm-hmm. So right around 2018, 19 is when I said, okay, mm-hmm. let's start figuring this out. So it's a Six Sigma process, backwards to forwards. Mm-hmm. The first thing I did was to secure the, the way I'm going to print scalable worldwide patent since being in the printing industry that was that was easy for me mm-hmm. so i was able to build the way the digital presses run the way right. i can maximize the sheet um with the perforating perforating unit and um build mm-hmm. out that process so it's flawless and now i partnered with kodak canon and fuji mm-hmm. uh, a service level agreement so we can actually give them what we tell them how to print it Mm -hmm. customers up on a sheet with the perforation so it's the same that someone gets on the east coast west coast or wherever they get it right so that's all done Mm -hmm. so now when that's done we got to figure out how we're going to build it right from Mm -hmm. the technology standpoint so that takes money and uh you know one of the main things that i really wanted to do was build this my way Mm -hmm. sure and most people in this phase would go to venture capitalists, private equity, mm-hmm. give up 10, 20, 30% equity of their company mm-hmm. and get a big check up front and then be owned by that venture capitalist or private equity. Uh, right. per- so my attorney at the time, uh, Monty Estes, uh, was, I called him Harvard because he went to Harvard. That was his nickname. But he created Uvani Upstate Venture Capitalists. And one of the main things he said is, is since you're going to do it this way, don't go through any venture capital, build what you need as you build out. So right. as I started building the technology, I went and got 50,000 here, 100,000 here. 
everybody told me it was going to take close to $30 million to build this platform. Because mm -hmm. I feel now I have a platform equal to or better than Facebook, Instagram, you name it. I think, I think we're the best. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get why I think we're the best. So I'm at 3.2 million all in. Mm -hmm. And this past October was our opening to the world to ad week coming mm -hmm. out to see you, you saw me at visual first mm -hmm. and back to New York city for a and a the association of Afro national advertisers. Mm -hmm. So we, we really came a long way. Mm -hmm. and, um, we used the last two years. I think, I think the pandemic was perfect for us. Mm -hmm. We were able to get some extra technology built, mm -hmm. but um, we were able to do all of our beta tests, our short runs, our long runs, everything mm -hmm. flawlessly. But, you know, I was able to take the photo industry, the tech industry, the printing industry, the, obviously the data industry mm. and marketing and omni-channel and bring it all into one platform that only benefits the consumers because they're getting high quality free pictures. Mm -hmm. And But the brands, my main focus was helping every small business, every brand, how I can put mm. them in mm. touch with consumers. So that's where we're at today. So. For those who aren't familiar, can you kind of describe first, like the app experience? What is from the consumer side? What's the offering for them uh, when they download the app? Why would they even want to do this? Well, one, that's a great question. So, uh, so the first thing we all know last year, 2.2 trillion people took photos. I think mm -hmm. it might be close on that number and about 40 billion printed, mm -hmm. but they paid printing, right? Going to the, you know, the Shutterflies, the Targets, CBS, Walgreens. Ours is 100% free. Mm -hmm. There's no charge. And it's it's a very high quality. I think we're the best quality, but mm -hmm. we're we're very high quality. So 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 by free and I'm doing I'm doing air quotes, there's a lot of free apps out there, but where they monetize is, is shipping. So is right. there shipping involved? No shipping. We don't even ask you for a credit card. Nothing. Okay. I go like I coach soccer at high level. And mm -hmm. I saw all these coaches charging families five, six grand to coach them. It's a soccer ball on grass. Mm -hmm. It's pictures. Mm -hmm. I want to give free pictures to everybody because why? We all have thousands of pictures on our cell phones and mm -hmm. it's growing, right? So we're at 3.2 trillion. You know, the, the number is supposed to be over 10 trillion in 2030. So that's the carrot, right? We give everybody free pictures. But what's associated with it? But before you go with that, just talk a little bit about like, like number of quantity, how many pictures can people order? Oh, okay. You yeah. know, you know, that sort of thing. What, what, and then get into what they actually get, which is what I think is where you were going. Yeah. So we give 20 uh, free pictures every time they order off the app. Okay. And it looks, well, that's right. We're not, but this, it looks like this, <laughs> but we're not showing that. But anyway, they get 20 free photos mm -hmm. and they can continuously order as much as you want. I mean, we, we try to cap it at 200 a month, but right. we never get anybody over 200 a month, mm -hmm. but it's there if they want it. Right. It's free. So there's no charge. So that's, that's the number they get per packet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so like you said, with the picture, there's, there's some advertising there. There's some, there's some content there. Um, yes. So talk a little bit about that, because I think that's sort of the secret sauce to your offering is it's not just a generic ad for Pampers or, you know, baby food or other things like people have done with these sort of advertising driven print offerings. Right. So if you're a customer of an organization, one of our business models mm -hmm. is we go out and find the, the businesses that have the chicken and the eggs, right? Mm -hmm. A bunch of consumers and they have a bunch of brands and advertisers that they try to connect with each other. Right. Print comes in as the engine, right? So we now, I'll just use, let's say AAA. If AAA becomes a member, AAA mm -hmm. will say, hey, we want to give all of our membership free photos, compliments of AAA. But in there is going to be all the brands that pay to be in front of those consumers. Right. AAA is hoping they come to their website to buy something from Enterprise Rent-A-Car or whatever they offer. Right. So, so now we give that, we drive the traffic for them, mm -hmm. but then we give a rev share back to, to the pack, what we call a packet sponsor. The members enjoy it because they get free pictures mm -hmm. and then obviously the advertisers love it because they're getting a hundred percent open rate and a hundred percent viewing rate of every one of their messages. Mm -hmm. because it's like a 10 second billboard of your mm -hmm. brand message in front of those consumers. Mm -hmm. And eventually as our database grows into the millions, mm -hmm. that packet sponsor model will still be there. But now those consumers that were on AAA or Chewy or you, whoever are, 
relationships are, are right. going to be able to order because of our technology. And the right. technology is if you're drinking coffee in your, in your, in your pictures, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, or the local coffee house in your geofenced zip code will come next to you. If you're mm. playing golf, you know, soccer, whatever, dick sporting goods. So we mm. will bring brand mm-hmm. consumer in that geo area at a hundred percent. So, so, so I just want to reinforce that. So you're using some technology, which that's what you have the patent for yes. to, to look at the image and gear local advertising to the content of the picture. Yes. Not only to the, the local advertising, but to the household and the person in mm. the house. Mm. And that's Does your just- app capture yeah. any kind of geographical data other than the actual images in the picture? I mean, for example, are you asking people to put their age, household size, oh. anything like that? Or you just, you just don't need it? Don't need it. You just put in the information where I got to mail it. Right, I gotta, I gotta mail it to someone's house, but that's and, and, and that is some information there because you get some right. idea of household demographics of you know wh- whether they own or rent or you know that kind of thing. So sure. there's a little bit there. Do you use that information? A little bit, yeah. And we cross reference. You know, pictures worth a thousand words. Everybody here knows that. But what we thought of is pictures worth ten thousand attributes. Mm-hmm. So as we collect the attributes from the photo, mm-hmm. we can cluster them into a way each vertical box. Mm-hmm. The car dealerships versus the insurance companies, versus the, the realtors, they all have demographics. They all have points that they have their consumers. Mm. We know that. So now we can take those brands and push them into campaigns that are running, that mm. we have set up. But eventually, those campaigns and those attributes mm. will also benefit the consumer, right? Mm. Because if you're driving a BMW, BMW, is probably an ad will go next to you. But Mercedes might say, I don't want, I want, I want to pull them away from BMW and I want them to come to my Mercedes. Or if, if they're drinking coffee, Dunkin' Donuts is a, an ad, but Starbucks might say, Hey, I'm going to give a better offer to have mm-hmm. them come over and get a free coffee at Starbucks. So we can do that in the future. When you're looking at, like I said, hundred percent, hundred percent impression, because obviously people have to interact physically with the ad to remove the picture, right? Cause they don't. Right. So talk about the size because we're an audio podcast. So people yes. can't really see this. I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage them obviously go to prince.com and check this out. Yes. But you know, what is the size of the snapshot and what is the size of the ad and how big is the envelope that comes and all that fun stuff? Yeah, so that's a great question. So the size of the picture is a four by six picture. Mm-hmm. And the ad associated with it is six by eight. Is there anything on the back of the of the print? No, or- so there's no there's no ad on the back of the photo. It's okay. completely a photo that they can put in a frame or .edu and college kids put on their walls, whatever. There's no, that's one of the main things was to keep the photo clean of advertising. Okay. But now you have the, you mm-hmm. have the actual me- message from the brand, compliments of the brand. Because there have been some people who've tried that, but they back print it. And right. that's, you know, not as appealing for the consumers to have something shining through if they're putting in, you know, near a window or something like that. Yeah. So they, they can't do that. That's an infringement on our patent and intellectual properties. Mm -hmm. So there's, there can't be any advertisement associated with a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so then talk about the format of the ad itself. Uh, People can do a two-sided ad, right? Is it, is it, is it two advertisers or one? On both depends on, it depends on the advertiser and what it, what space he wants to buy. He can buy a one-sided ad or a two-sided ad. Mm-hmm. He can buy the envelope. He can buy the inside of the envelope. He mm-hmm. can buy the 21st card. Everything's available for revenue. Cool. So what are, what are typically, now I understand the rates are probably very, very dynamic based on, you know, all these, all these factors that could come in. I imagine though, the, the per click or I, I don't know, per handle, I don't know, per impression cost impression. I guess is, is comparable or less than let's say TV or radio or something like that. Because that's really what you're competing against. Well, we feel we're not competing against anybody. So I'm going to explain that. So right now it's 60 cents an ad. Mm-hmm. So I'll just use numbers. So uh, per impression. Yeah. So if someone, if an advertiser was going to buy 10,000 impressions in the Rochester market, Mm-hmm. It would be six thousand dollars. Okay, right. so right, but they're guaranteed ten thousand people are going to see their ad. Right. In today's world of direct marketing, right, they don't have to mail out a million postcards. Right. Well, what we give for ten thousand, so that's six thousand dollars for ten thousand packets is equivalent to half a million dollars for for a million postcards. Right. It's not even apples with apples. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's that's how we that's how we determine. 
So you've already got some partnerships with some fairly large brands. Um, you've yeah. announced those, I think it was the advertising week or somewhere like that you mentioned those. Can you talk a little bit about how that process was, was engaging with them? Because obviously, you know, some of these big brands you've talked about and feel free to name drop a couple if you want, um, clearly are getting pitched all the time with the latest and greatest. Oh, you know, we're doing this platform and we're doing this ad and we're doing this video and we're doing this and pre-roll this and post-roll that and insert this and insert that. So what was that conversation like when you're not even in the marketplace yet and you're talking to some of these folks? Well, this is this is the amazing part of Friends Platform. We have not had anybody say no yet. Mm -hmm. By coming off of Ad Week and Visual First and A and A, our phones have not stopped ringing because they all want to be part of it. But let's just use Phoenix Brands. Phoenix Brands has two hundred plus locations around the country, millions of consumers around the country, and they have six or seven brands underneath their platform. So mm -hmm. this is a great tool for them to take those brands and communicate with their consumers. Right. I give a rev share back to them. So it's a it's a win-win for them. Same with SkyZone. We just got a call from the Big 12 conference, which the school, right? All the, you know, Ohio State, Michigan State. But now I don't think it's the Big 12 anymore because they just added in like 10 more schools. So oh, yeah, I'm not talking about the Big 10, Ten which is where we are in Michigan. So yeah. So yeah, they add, they've got about 16 schools now. So yeah. So these are companies that are calling us daily, right? And uh, we just got off the phone with... Um, uh, Ad Critter, which is another platform that wants to use us and, you know, many others that were signing up daily, right? So it's a win-win for the brand, mm -hmm. but it's also a win-win for the packet sponsor be because of what we just discussed. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously it's a win-win for the consumers. And mm -hmm. we won the national award for the post office last year. right? So that was a big thing for us, uh, for credibility mm -hmm. and um, unanimous decision there. And and um, it's it's amazing what we can do for them also. So how finite can you drill this down in terms of, I mean, can you even, let's say, for example, um, let's say I'm, let's talk about the Big Ten for a second. Let's say I'm in a Michigan jersey and I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Can you pair that on that same picture, the cup of coffee or a Michigan jersey on the other side? Is Is it that? Is it, can you actually do that? Eventually, that's where we're going to be, right? Okay. So as we see a Michigan uh, logo, it's only going to be Michigan, Michigan brands that are going to that person in that area of the country versus your arrival there down in, you know, the O and, and out, out west and things like that. So um, it's a, it's a, it, that's our technology. That's what we can do. Okay. And we're incorporating QR codes now. Mm -hmm. So we, we are driving uh, for the not only the 100% open rate, mm -hmm. the average advertisers are going to get an automated QR code where they can direct their message anywhere they want back mm -hmm. to their website, or maybe it pops up and they have them download the mm -hmm. advertiser's website. I mean, the advertiser's mm -hmm. app. We're great, and we're doing a lot of omni-channel things added to the Prince platform, which again, there's no competition for Friends, mm -hmm. and it's a hundred, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a win-win for mm -hmm. everyone. So there is some concern. Obviously I heard some chatter at visual for some people had not, experienced sprints before didn't know what it was and there was some concern from the from the traditional trade who yep. said i like this idea for that but it's a concern to me that you know you're kind of devaluing the value of a snapshot by making it zero what is your response to those folks from the traditional side we're trying now to sell sell prints right they're trying to get people to go to walgreen or cvs to buy prints what what what, what is your thought about that Stay with us. We'll be right back. Photo retailers, energize your sales with Share Me Chat, the proven texting platform. Using chat to text on your website keeps your customers connected and buying. See us at Pro and IPI to find out why dealers using Share Me Chat close more sales without adding staff. Find out more at shareme.chat. That's a great question. Nobody's ever asked me that, but I'm just going to give you the build test to answer on that. <laughs> they didn't think of it. Yeah. Right. And I did. So right. what they should do is partner with me because they'll make more money off of a partnership as a mm -hmm. packet sponsor with friends. Mm -hmm. Again, it's still, you know, I'm in, the, I'm here to deliver the message of the sure. brand. Sure. Oh, so it's a win. So I'm looking at it by being in the printing industry. Right. 
I want it to be the best quality, not only on the photo, but the ad is the same quality as the photo. Right. So for those people that are saying I'm devaluing it, I think I'm bringing um, a new wave back about photos. Yep. I think creating something for the ages 16 to 30 that, you know, we want them printing, right? We want them right. printing. Exactly. We want them engaged in printing, right? I think this will engage them because they've never seen print. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the old shoebox photos and things like that. I mean, talking with um, various partners and uh, photo mine and, you know, them, I mean, this is a win-win for that age group. Yeah. So we're, we're actually bringing their pictures that are stuck mm -hmm. on their phone and they're going to go to Starbucks. They're going to go to Target. They're going to go to, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods. And, it's, yeah. and so that's, that's how I answer that. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I, I know that's a great answer. And obviously you're not, if someone were, for example, to be competing who want to sell prints, right? They want to reach that market. You take their advertising as well. Let's say, for example, an online photo book company, you could partner with them and, hey, if you got someone now who's photoactive, who sees a print, now they want to make a book. You don't make books as right. of yet, if you ever well. will. But, you know, certainly it's a partnership opportunity. Also, camera makers also could partner right. with you. So we're, we're looking always to to partner with somebody that I want to help them, mm -hmm. but if it's something that we can offer these con millions of consumers. I mean, we're going to have tens of, you know, hundreds of millions of consumers. Mm -hmm. And if I can help grow their vertical and help them sell more cameras mm -hmm. and sell more prints, I want to do that for them. Mm -hmm. so. so going forward, I mean, it's relatively new. It's been gestating for a long time, but it's relatively new. You've had a lot of good response. Um, we're in the holiday season right now. What, what are you seeing going through your platform now in terms of adoption? Because because you're really, you know, kind of in, I, I don't know what kind of money you're spending on getting people to download the app, but I imagine you got to spend some bucks. Zero. That's okay. why I, I did go research all those marketing companies and, you know, anywhere from $350 to $8 cost per customer acquisition to download my app. Mm -hmm. That's my business model, why I went and partnered with companies that have the chicken and the eggs. Mm -hmm. Because if once they download... That's my numbers. That's my volume of consumers that grow. Right. And that's how I eliminate the, the download costs. So you're not really campaigning to get people to download the app. So how are you creating consumer awareness with these Gen Z people and all that? So currently we have over 40 uh, packet sponsors signed to mm -hmm. their millions of consumers. So they're telling them to download our app. Oh, okay. Then, all right. That's how it works. So as oh, those, okay. Now that just, makes sense. Now it's just spreading virally. So okay. now it's spreading through the packet sponsors. Other, so we're going to have close to over 100 packet sponsors going by end of first quarter, mm -hmm. which translates to tens of millions of consumers. Mm -hmm. Win-win for everybody. Okay. So are you sharing your, your adoption rate as of yet in terms of downloads for the app? Are you sharing that yet? We will be sharing that soon after the first of the year. But okay. yeah, and then I'll share that with you also so you can post that. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it'd be, it, so we always tell the packet sponsor, and I have a whole, you know, formulas that mm. we have that, you know, three and a half adoption rate, three and a half percent. Um, if you get up higher than that, well, we're a lot, we're a lot higher than that. Mm -hmm. And what, right. what happens is once they find out it's free, like the freemium is like, all right, well, it's really free. But once they get the packet in the mail mm -hmm. and they see the quality, and they didn't have to do a credit card and they mm -hmm. didn't have to do any personal things on a website. Mm -hmm. They just continue to order. They love yeah. it. They just don't yeah. shut down. And yeah, I was going to say, because I mean, I mean, you've got, I mean, you've reduced a lot of the friction points, obviously, right? I mean, because um, you're not requiring the credit card. You're not requiring, I mean, so literally you can just download, yeah. take pictures and order. Yes. And what's nice about for the advertising side mm -hmm. is, if, a, if an advertiser wanted to keep sending out a postcard, they would have to do, right, new creative, new printing, right? right. Uh, for us, we allow the advertiser to log in and change their message as much as they want for free. So mm -hmm. they can tell a story to the consumers. They mm -hmm. can change their marketing daily, every mm -hmm. week, whatever, at mm -hmm. no extra charge. So now it's it's mm -hmm. a win-win for them too. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that from, from the advertiser's end of it, right? So- they become a, a sponsor of friends. They yeah. get a login in a portal of some sort where they get the dimensions of and the specs of the ad that's going to be printed. Yeah. Let's assume that, you know, it's a, we'll just say with one side, but you can say they can do both, right? They can really get granular in terms of the offering 
for example, uh, and like you said, they can change it as much as they want. So for example, if somebody reorders, do they know even that that person reordered so to show them a new message? Oh yeah, they, the advertiser will know that. We yeah, that's what I'm saying. When I'm coming yeah, up from the we, advertiser we're side. Back to the advertiser, yeah. yeah. So so for instance, our dashboard's almost done that. It's almost like an ad tech platform. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be able to type in whatever their demographics are, whatever that is, and it's gonna come up, oh, you can be in the Sky Zone packet, you can be in the Phoenix Brands packet, you can be in the Big Ten packet, and we have X amount of consumers based on what you typed in of your demographics. Those ads will go to them, right? right? So that's that's eventually where this is going to be. But if you're part of the Phoenix Brands packet, you have a communication going back and forth because you're a member of Phoenix Brands. Mm -hmm. so Prince had to do that outside of this. Right. It would go to spam. So right. that's why I partnered with all these partnerships. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So now they say, hey, Gary, thanks for being part of Phoenix Brands. Download the Prince app and put in Phoenix and you get all the free pictures you want compliments of our platform. Cool. And, and so you've only been out a couple months, but you said you're seeing a significant amount of reorders. Well, everybody that orders reorders constantly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, it is. So obviously from the photo world, you know, the four by six is sort of a, some people would say it's a dead product. Some would say it's a mature product. Some people would say it's a very static product. You've got a big sheet of paper there. Could you do, are you looking at other sizes, maybe a five by seven with a smaller ad or something like that? Yeah. So eventually, you know, we get a lot of that. Hey, I love your platform. I love your photos, the quality. Can I get bigger? So right. we know there's phases we got to do down the road. I really don't want to um, get into offering everything because we have friends of ours on this pl platform that we're talking about. That's their work. That's their right. world. Yeah. So I want, I want to help them. Right. So I can say, hey, you want a five by seven? Go to our partner X. Go to our partner for a mug here. Go to our partner here for a book, right? I want right. to be able to drive traffic to them also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I want to do there. We have some new things also coming out. I'll, I'll, I'll leak in. Like if you have a, a picture mm -hmm. in the future, not too far away, that picture can come live on someone's phone as a video. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's, I mean, there's some technology out there, the flam technology and people like that, that can do that. Yep. Yeah, now, exactly. we're, we're not now, now will that be built into the Prince app? So you yes, have to go back to all the, built into the app. Yep. Oh, I don't know. That's cool. Cause I think that's a very much a uh, growing area where this sort of hybrid, you know, print video internet thing will, will grow. Yeah. And it's all about trying to get in front of that target market that nobody can get in front. Right. So <laughs> yeah. We, we want to do that. Anything that we can keep it high quality, mm -hmm. easy, you know, keep it simple right. and, and make it what I want to say affordable, free is affordable. But you, I just want to make sure that everybody wins in the, in the in the process. You know, if there's anybody out there that thinks their platform can go good with friends, I'd love to talk to them because you never know that I will, I will help. I want to help them grow, too. So whatever mm -hmm. I can do. Now you don't do any printing yourself as a as a thing. You have partners, right? Exactly. So, so is is that open for business? Do you want people to talk to you? And how would they reach you? Um, well, first of all, they can go to France or Bill Bill at France, and and we can give my information as much my phone number, whatever they'd like there. Um, but I would love if they can handle the quality. Right. Do they have to be on a specific press, or is it just a schematic? No, I mean. You know, the Fuji platform and the Kodak platform and the Canon platform are are are, are great so, platforms. So it's a roll feed type type platform. Yeah, yeah. High end digital, high end, you know, API mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. way through. But but, but but like a cut sheet printer probably isn't gonna be doing what you're looking for. Well, a cut sheet printer, um, there is machines out there from those those brands I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, that if, if they can handle the volume, it all it comes down as yeah. If they can handle the work, right? Yeah. So, so, so what's the turnaround required for a partner? Let's say, for example, you know, um, I, I download the app, I, or may have placed an order. What's my expectation to have that, that order delivered for free in my mailbox? Oh, okay. Yeah. What's so the we turnaround right time now. expectation? Cause you've got a partner, so you got to fulfill that. Yeah. So we, we print every week um, right now. Now we're moving up to twice a week. Mm -hmm. So Monday they get printed, they go out Tuesday. You should have them by USPS Friday, Saturday ish, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then if you order after that, we print at the end of the week and it'll go out on, on Monday. Right. So, okay. so it's just our, our in-house is only one or two days in-house. Mm 
-hmm. And then it's the two, three, four, five days, depending on how far you're away. Okay. So the, so it's not like you order a print and the order goes out the next day, like traditional photo printing. It's you're going to consolidate those orders to get a, an efficient print uh, right. process. And, and where it's projected now with our volume, we're going to, we're gonna probably by, I think March, we just had that meeting yesterday in our operations department. Uh, we think well, we're going to be printing every day by March, right? Okay. So that's just the way the volumes are coming and the way everything's mm -hmm. happening. It, it's a massive platform we built. Mm -hmm our operation side to our tech side to our you know our photo side with uh gustavo and everybody there but you know you got cfos now you got you got lawyers you got we have a we got a lot of people doing this right so it's good yeah so how big is your team now because you've been growing this for a while so yeah so we're up to over 35 right now we're at 37 which makes me happy is the print service providers mm -hmm. are going to be growing them uh their workforce right. compliments us and I'm, I'm excited about that okay Great. Well, listen, I'm really excited that we finally had a chance to talk. Well, we've actually talked before, but this is the first time yes. talking on on, exactly. on on camera and all of that. So, yes. so thank you so much both for your time. And uh, again, where can people go if they're interested in either partnering with Prince from an output standpoint, or or even like want to become a, a packet sponsor or something similar? So obviously, the website is Prince F R I N T Z dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal email is Bill at Prince.com. And my cell phone is 585-739-5710 is my personal cell phone. They can call me. Anytime. Well, that's dangerous putting that out there, but that's I hope okay. you do get a good mind. response. <laughs> I don't mind at all. I, I, I will answer everybody's call. Okay. Well, listen, Bill, thank you so much. Look forward to, to uh, hearing more about the future success and innovations at Prince and uh, have a great week. Thank you, Gary. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to the Dead Pixel Society podcast. Read more great stories and sign up for the newsletter at www.thedeadpixelssociety.com.